second. Now the umpires are coming out to go over the grounds rules. Umpire calling the balls and strikes will be Paul Pryor. At first base, Tony Vincent. At second base, it'll be Frank Shikori. And the umpire at third base will be Dave Davidson. On the schedule in the National League, Montreal scheduled against St. Louis for a night game in St. Louis. Atlanta playing in Cincinnati. San Francisco at Houston and Los Angeles against San Diego. In the American League, at the end of six, the Yankees won, Cleveland won. In that ball game, the Yankees got a run on the top of the sixth inning to tie it up. Mel Stoudemire going for the Yankees, his record 18 and 11. Sam McDowell going for Cleveland, his record 15 and 12. First game of a twilight doubleheader. Also scheduled, Baltimore at Detroit, a night ball game. Washington at Boston, the starting pitchers have been posted. Dave Bosman going for Washington, his record 11 and 5. And Vincent Romo going for the Red Sox, his record 5 and 10. Minnesota will play on the coast against Oakland. Chicago playing the California Angels in Anaheim, California. And Kansas City playing the Pilots up in Seattle. So that's the way the schedule looks as we get ready for this second ball game. And it will be in the hands of Jim McAndrew, who has won 10 and lost 12. And he has a record of 1-1 one and one against the Philadelphia Phillies. Manager Gil Hodges and manager George Myatt going back to their respective benches. The umpire is taking their stations and very shortly here the Mets will be on the field. Well, he's got the early lead in the first ball game as they scored a run in the second off Tom Seaver when he walked Johnny Callison and Darren Johnson tripled. But the Mets came back in the bottom of the second to score three and earn runs. It was all started off by a walk by Ron Svoboda, an error by the first baseman Richie Allen to put runners at first and third, another walk to Rod Gasper, and a single by Al White. That tied up the ball game. Tom Seaver then hit into a fourth play with another run scoring. And then on a rundown play on that same play, an error by the catcher Mike Ryan allowed Gasper to score from second base. So the Mets had a 3-1 lead in that first ball game and tacked on two more runs in the eighth inning when Tommy Agee got a leadoff single and scored ahead of a home run by Jerry Grody. For Jerry, it was his home run of the year. So that made it a 5-1 ball game. And now Jim McAndrew getting set to take his warm-up pitches as his second ball game starts to come on up. We got Phil Foster right now in our radio booth, one of the top baseball fans in the country, and we saw him last in Chicago, and he was on the Chicago Rooters there, and Phil, they actually picketed you there, huh? They picketed me, those crazy people over there, but they're very bad fans. They're they're front runners, and right now they must be dying, and I'm I'm very happy to say I'm here to watch the death. Phil, how do you figure this race? Do you think the Mets can do it? Yeah, I see no reason why they can't do it. I, uh... I think that uh, we got better pitching staff than they got, and I think that uh, our hitters are coming through when you're supposed to come through. They got the uh, big hitters, but they hit when they don't count. And, uh, and I think they're, they're, they got a little apple going. I'd rather be in second place right now than first place, because second place, you, you are a little bit loose, and uh, you can go out and uh, you're a little bit hungry. Whereas in first place, you got to stand up there, and you get a little frightened. You start to look at the scoreboard all the time. Bill Foster and uh, one of our great baseball fans, and that that will start off in the second ball game. Leadoff batter for the Philadelphia Phillies, Terry Harmon, stepping in the batter's box. On the mound, Jim McAndrew. The signs go out, Duffy Dyer the catcher. And the first pitch of the game is in for a call strike. Harmon was a pinch hitter in the first ball game and was 0 for 1. He's batting 227 for the year with no home runs and 14 runs batted in. He'll be followed by Johnny Briggs and Richie Allen. And McAndrew's next delivery. Breaking ball in the dirt, it's 1 and 1. Jim McAndrew, 25 years of age, 6'2", 175 pounds. He lives in Lost Nation, Iowa. 1968, he won 4 and lost 7. He has a lifetime record of 10 and 12. And at 1-1, the pitch back to Harmon is swung on and foul tipped into the glove of Duffy Dyer, strike two. One ball, two strikes. 
Defensively, Don Clendenin at first base, at second base, Ken Boswell, at shortstop, Bud Harrelson, at third base, Wayne Garrett. And the one-two pitch. It is fouled on the right side, fair on the right side, popped out and picked up by the pitcher, McAndrew, as Clendenin also was waiting for the ball. It was hit off, spinning out toward first base. Neither could make a play at first, and Harmon gets a bloop single. It was hit right off the hands, a little pop fly that did not go more than about 20 feet in the air, and it came down, spinning, spun dead, and there was no way to make a play at first base, and Terry Harmon leads off with a base hit. That'll bring up Johnny Briggs. Johnny in the first ball game was three for four with a single, a double, and a triple. And his average now at 227 with nine home runs and 33 runs batted in. So the Phillies have drawn first blood, a scratch, but all those hits all look alike the next day in the newspaper. Here's the pitch. And it's in for a call strike. Briggs, a left-hand batter. One strike count, no one out. Top of the first, the second game just underway. If you're around the area, there's room here. Come on out and join in the fun. One strike delivery, a slow curve that hangs high, and it's one and one. So the first ball game was very fast. Here it's a little bit slower as McAndrew takes time to work here in this half inning. Next pitch is swung on a miss, a fastball that got by. It's one and two. Mets played their fastest game of the year that first ball game, an hour and 52 minutes. Tom Seaver against, against Grant Jackson. Home plate umpire Paul Pryor dusting off home plate after that last swing. And now McAndrew sets and the one two pitch. Fastball high and away. Two balls, two strikes. Pittsburgh beat the Cubs 9 to 2 today. The Cubs got four hits in the ball game off Steve Blast, all by Billy Williams. Two of them were home runs. Cleon Jones has sat out. The doubleheader so far. He's trailing Roberto Clemente by one. Runner goes. The pitch is hit in the hole. A perfect hit and run play. Moving on to third on the base hit is Terry Harmon. The ball hit very slowly. In fact, the bat was broken, but the shortstop, Bud Harrelson, was covering second with the runner going, and the ball hit right through his departed position. So the Phillies have their first two men on, and both on scratch hits. And it brings up Richie Allen. Allen 0 for 4 in the first game. His average at 301. He has 29 home runs, 68 runs batted in. The Mets are playing the infield back. Outfield shaded toward right. And McAndrew in trouble. No one out. Here's the pitch. And a slow curve is inside a ball. Mets have an outfield of Art Shamsky in left field, Tommy Agee in center field, and Ron Swoboda in right. The outfield here is very heavy from the rain. It's very slow going. Infield also a little slow, although not too bad. The 1-0 pitch to Allen, taken over the inside corner as McAndrew gets a fastball by. It's 1-1. One one. Allen waving that big 40-ounce bat. As McAndrew wipes his brow, now he goes into the stretch. And the pitch. It is taken inside and high. Slider missing and the count two balls and one strike. Every game, a big game for the New York Mets. They trail the Cubs by two in the loss column. Two balls, one strike. McAndrew sets up. Here's the pitch. It is swung on and missed. Strike two. McAndrew with a breaking pitch, getting his second strike.
Now the signs go out. Big lead at first by Johnny Briggs. Here's the pitch. And a fastball is inside and high. So the count full at three and two to Richie Allen. Mets are back looking for the double play. They're willing to give up a run to get two. Get two men out. Allen has hit into six double plays this year. He has struck out 114 times. And the 3-2 pitch, the runner not going. It's one on and miss. Jim McAndrew with a 3-2 curveball getting Richie Allen for the first out of the inning. Runner still at first and third, and the batter coming up is Johnny Callison. Callison was 0 for 3 in the first game. Left-hand batter hitting at 260. He has 14 home runs and 47 runs batted in. Again, the Mets have their infield back, with the exception of the third baseman, Wayne Garrett. And the first baseman, Don Clendenin, holding against the runner at first. Briggs with a big lead. Here's the pitch. It is hit to deep right field. Going back is Ron Swoboda. He's back in the warning track to make the catch. Tagged up at third base and scoring is Terry Harmon. And going back to first base is Johnny Briggs. So the Phillies have drawn first blood. Scratching out two hits and getting a sacrifice fly from Johnny Callison. For Callison, his 48th run batted in. That brings up the third baseman, Darren Johnson. Darren won for four. He drove in the one run the Phillies had in the first ball game as the Mets won five to one for Tom Seaver's 20th. Johnson, a right-hand batter, hitting at 263 with 16 home runs and 67 runs batted in. Now McAndrew to the plate. And the pitch is swung on a miss, a slider for a strike. Phillies with a record of 54 wins. They have lost 80 ball games. Briggs at first base. Again, a good size lead. And the pitch, it is not swung on, taken on a check swing, and it's one and one. One ball, one strike. Two men out. Top of the first. And the next pitch is swung on a miss. Again, the slider, and it's one and two. McAndrew, this season, tying the club record for consecutive scoreless innings at 23, the record originally set by Jerry Kuzman. Now the right-hander ready. Briggs with a big lead. He's running. The pitch is grounded slowly out toward third. Coming across is Wayne Garrett to field the ball. The throw to first base is in time for the out to retire as a side. In the inning, one run on two hits. No errors and one man left on. And the score at the end of one half inning, the Philadelphia Phillies won. The New York Mets coming up. Having a problem in deciding where to take your group on its next outing? If so, let the Mets Group Sales Department solve it for you. This department is manned by experts in handling both men's and women's groups. These same specialists encourage community and civic organizations, social and fraternal clubs, youth, family, and athletic groups to take in a Mets ball game and enjoy a day at Shea. In addition to providing group ticket sales for a ball game, our representatives will be happy to furnish you with all the details of the beautiful restaurants at Shea Stadium, which are available for parties, large or small, up to 700 persons. For groups of 100 or more, recognition will be given to your organization on the changeable message scoreboard here at Shea. Residents of Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York can easily obtain additional information simply by writing to Group Sales Manager, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, 11368. Or if you like, telephone 212-672-3000. The representative handling your area will be more than happy to personally speak before your men's or women's group, large or small, and explain all the details. Call or write today. We're going to the bottom half of the first inning of the second game of the doubleheader. The Mets won the first game 5-1 to one as Tom Seaver got the win, his 20th, 
to become the first 20-game winner in Mets history and to become the first 20-game winner in the National League. It's Jim McAndrew against Rick Wise in the second ball game, and Rick preparing to pitch to the leadoff batter for the Mets. Tommy Agee. Tommy will be followed by Wayne Garrett and then Don Clendenin. Phillies have Dave Watkins catching, Richie Allen at first base, Terry Harmon at second base, Don Money at shortstop, Aaron Johnson at third. In left field, Ron Stone. In center field, Johnny Briggs. And in right field, Johnny Gallison. 1968, he was 9 and 15. He has a lifetime major league record of 41 wins and 46 losses. Next pitch, a slider outside. It's 1 and 1. His lifetime record against the Mets, six wins and three losses, and this year he has won none and lost one. A.G. with 24 home runs leads the club. He has 67 RBIs. Next pitch, a fastball swung on a miss. One and two. Mets playing without the aid of Cleon Jones. He is being rested. He has a bruised hand. Phillies are playing without their young rookie ball player, Larry Heisel, who's having a great year. Next pitch is foul off the glove of Watkins, and the count stays at one and two. Jones is trailing Roberto Comeni in the National League batting race, one point behind Comeni's league leading 349. Larry Heisel, after getting off to a slow start, batting 265 with 20 home runs and 56 runs batted in. One ball, two strikes. Once again, the pitch by Wise, and it swung on a miss, the slider, and strike three. So A.G. becomes the first strikeout victim. That brings up Wayne Garrett. Phillies are leading by a score of one nothing. Garrett playing at third base. He did not play in the first ball game. Wayne hitting 229 with one home run and 31 runs batted in. And Rick Wise with the pitch. It is grounded to the second baseman, Terry Harmon. He moves to his left to make the play, and it's sort of first base is in time for the out. Two men out, Don Clendenin coming up, and we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WKAJ-FM, Saratoga Springs, New York. 102.3 on your FM dial, the home of the New York Mets. Ralph Geiner, along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Shea Stadium. Phillies are in front 1-0. Don Clendon in the batter for the Mets with two men out in the bottom half of the first. Don had one hit in four times up in the first game. And a breaking pitch is over for a called strike. And then are now with 12 home runs and 43 runs batted in and a 268 average. Rick Wise, he has thrown almost all breaking pitches so far. Now he comes in with a fastball, but it is taken high and inside on a check swing. It's one and one. After seven, the Yankees won Cleveland one. Stoudemire against Sudden Sam McDowell. And the next pitch. Breaking pitch, a wild swing, and the count one and two. One ball, two strikes. On deck batter for the Mets is Art Chamsky. And the next delivery, fastball fouled into the stands, and the count stays in one and two. The Cubs started the action of the day with a five-game lead over the Mets. They lost to the Mets now four behind. Pittsburgh winning that ball game against Chicago now nine and a half back. They trail the Mets by five and a half. St. Louis, ten and a half games back. They play at home against Montreal. Next pitch is fouled back again on the play and the count stays at one and two. In the Western Division, the Giants lead Cincinnati by a game and a half. Also the Dodgers by a game and a half, but the Dodgers in third, a point back of the Cincinnati Reds. Atlanta in four, three games out, and Houston in fifth place, five and a half out. Dodgers playing at San Diego 
And San Diego beat them yesterday 3-0. That was a big loss for the Dodgers. They had planned to win them all, and they still hope to not lose anymore. Next pitch is ball two in the count two and two. The Giants finished their season with the Padres, so the Dodgers figure they have to go into the final series with a lead over the Giants, figuring the Giants to beat the Padres all the way. Now the 2-2 pitch. Change up inside and high, ball three. Incidentally, Willie Davis's 31-game hitting streak was stopped in that Padre win, 3-0 over the Dodgers. But he did set an all-time Dodger record, breaking Zach Wheat's record of 29. Set back in 1916. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Fastball swung on and missed, strike three. And a 1-2-3 inning for Rick Wise, picking up two strikeouts. And the score at the end of one, the Phillies won. The New York Mets... Nothing. Well, here's a note of interest for all you senior citizens who look forward to spending a pleasant afternoon at Shea Stadium watching the Mets in action. The last of four senior citizen days this season is scheduled for Thursday afternoon, September 11th, when the Mets take on the Montreal Expos at 2.05 p.m. In the final game of a three-game series, it sees a twilight doubleheader on Wednesday evening starting at 5 o'clock. All senior citizens 60 years of age and over will be admitted to Shea Stadium that day for a 50... And we'll be looking forward to seeing you. The date again, Thursday afternoon, September 11th, the final game of this current homestand. And the Mets will be playing the Montreal Expos in a single game starting at 2.05 p.m. We're going to the top of the second. The Phillies coming up for their second try. They have scored one run on two hits. And their first batter will be their sixth batter. Left fielder, Ron Stone. Ron was 0 for 3 in the first game against Tom Seaver's 20th win. It'll be Ron Stone, Dave Watkins, and... Don Money for Jim McAndrew here in the second. Stone, a left-hand batter. With an average of 247. He tries to drag one by the pitcher, misses the ball entirely, and strike one. Stone out of the batter's box, now taking time before getting back in. Dan McAndrew with the next delivery, and it's too low for a ball. Philadelphia Phillies weren't run by manager George Mott. He took over when Bob Skinner resigned. Next pitch is popped in the air, back of third. Harrelson goes back, raises his hand and makes the call. And he makes the catch in fair territory, about 10 feet from the foul line. One away, and it brings up the catcher, Dave Watkins. Dave Watkins is the fellow that ruined the Mets here at Shea Stadium when he was put in the ball game to do the catching. Actually, he was put in the ball game to play in the outfield. He had two home runs against the Mets to help defeat them. Now catching in the second game. In the first game, Mike Ryan was the starting catcher. And a breaking pitch is low and outside a ball. One ball, no strikes. Phillies lead 1-0, one out top of the second. Pitch back is a fastball that is in. Watkins decoy in a bunt and the count one and one. And at one one, the pitch back to the catcher. Swung on a miss and a slider. Swung through in the count, one ball, two strikes.
At the end of one and a half innings, Washington nothing, Boston nothing. Next delivery outside, right around the knees. Two and two. That ball game, Dick Bosman against Vincent Romo. Starting pitchers, Atlanta at Cincinnati. Phil Necro going for number 19. He's lost 12 against Jim Merritt, who has won 16 and lost five. Next pitch, a fastball. Swung on a miss. Strike three. Second strikeout for Jim McAndrew. And with two men out, the batter will be the eighth batter in the batting order, the shortstop, Don Money. Don was 0 for 3 in the first game. And his average at 225 for the year with five home runs and 38 runs batted in. And the first pitch is low a ball. And the 1 0 pitch popped in the air. Ball out toward the second base side, coming in as Boswell to make the call. Now running to catch up to it, and he makes the catch. Fairly close to the mound, running in from his second base position. So, Jim McAndrew with a 1 2 3 inning, and the score in the middle of the second the Philadelphia Phillies won the New York Mets. Nothing. This is the first batter in the second against Rick Wise, who retired the Mets 1 2 3 in the first, will be Art Shamsky. Art did not play in the first ball game. Shavsky batting 299. He has been the leading batter against the Phillies this year for the Mets with nine hits and 16 times up. It'll be Art Shamsky, Ken Boswell, and Ron Svoboda for the Mets here in the second as they try to get back into the lead. First pitch is swung on a miss for strike. has hit 11 home runs. He has 36 runs batted in and 241 times up. Left-hand batter hits from a crouch and the pitch is in over the inside corner at strike call. Breeze blowing in from right field tonight. Not too much of a breeze. And at two strikes, the pitch to Shamsky is a fastball outside. Pitch low, and it's one and two. Mets started the action today with a 244 team batting average. 93 home runs. They got one home run in that first game, so they now have 94. One two pitch, swung on and missed, strike three, and that's the third strikeout. In four men for Rick Wise. And it brings up Ken Boswell, who has been red hot for the Mets. The Boswell has had 13 hits in his last 25 times up. Better than 500. And Ken has raised his average to 260. Left hand batter. Boswell with three home runs and 23 runs batted in being played straight away and not too deep. And the first pitch by Wise is swung on and fouled back into the stands and strike. Wise has worked 172 innings and he has struck out 100 diving batters so far. He comes to the game with the best earned run average of any Philly starter. He has allowed 3.16 runs per nine ending ball game. Here's the one strike pitch. In for a call, strike two. Fastball at the knee. Rick has pitched four shutouts this year, and he's had 10 complete games. This is his 26th start. Big, tall right-hander. He has changed his pitching style considerably since coming to the majors. Now a very deliberate type pitcher. Next pitch is outside. It's one and two. Phillies handicapped by the loss of their strong left-hand pitcher, Chris Short, early in the season. 
But also a lot of dissension on the ball club. A lot of problems causing the firing of Bob Skinner. But they do have a fairly young ball club. Next pitch, a fastball high in the way. Two and two. Briggs. Larry Heisel, Don Money. Players that the Phillies are staking their chances on in the future. Also, according to the stories by Richie Allen, whomever he is traded for. There's one hit foul in the right field corner going over Johnny Callison near the stands. He can not, he got to it and made the catch. A late call by the first base umpire as he disappeared from our vision. And Callison went into the foul area there, reached down fairly close to the stands and came up with a one-handed catch. So two men away and it brings up Ron Swoboda. Ron 0 for 2 in the first game. Batting 237 with six home runs and 41 runs batted in. And the first pitch is a slider. It swung on strike one. One nothing ball game. The Phillies lead two men out bottom half of the second. The Mets won the first game five to one. One strike pitch. Fastball outside. One and one. called for a moment. Now back in and the 1-1 pitch. Rounded out to the third baseman Darren Johnson. He moves across and in and comes up with the ball. Throws the first base from the side as we tire. So the first six batters have been put away by Rick Wise. And the score at the end of two, the New York Mets trailing. The Phillies won. The Mets, nothing. This is Bill Cosby. When I was going to college, I realized that many middle-class and upper-class college students didn't realize what was going on in the poverty area. And so, when it came time to teach children from the poverty area, they couldn't very well communicate with them. You have to learn how to communicate with kids who would probably never make it because they were missing out on a good education. Now, today, college kids know what's happening. Now, if you're $5 a week, sounds challenging? You better believe it. Write Teacher Core, Washington, D.C., 20202. We're going to the top of the third. The Phillies leading one nothing. And their pitcher, Rick Wise, will be the leadoff batter against Jim McAndrew. Rick has been up 57 times with 17 base hits. He's had one home run and four runs batted in, and he is a fine hitting pitcher. First pitch, a curveball in for a golf strike. Change curve by Jim McAndrew. Rick Wise is batting. 298 for the year. And he goes over to get some rosin, but one strike count as Wise gets back in the batter's box. He'll be followed by the leadoff batter, Terry Harmon, who has scored the only run of this ball game, and then Johnny Briggs. And a slider is swung on a miss. Wise fooled by the pitch. It's strike two. Pitch again, a breaking pitch. A slider swung on and missed. Strike three. Andrew gets his third strikeout. That'll bring up the leadoff batter, Terry Harmon. Harmon had an infield hit. His first time up, moved over to the third on a hit-and-run base hit by Johnny Briggs and scored on the sacrifice fly by Johnny Callison. Only run of the ball game. And the first pitch is hit in the air to shallow center field. Tommy Agee moving to his right side, making the catch. 
If you want real cola refreshment, get with R.C. The one with the mad, mad taste. Get with the comer. That brings up Johnny Briggs. John, three for four in the first game, now one for one in this game, so he is four for five. Batting at 229. First pitch is taken at the knees. It's ball one. Briggs decoying a bunt. Pittsburgh beat the Cubs today, 9-2, to two, in case you missed that. 1-0 pitch, in for a call strike. And the Mets with their win in the first game, 5-1, to one, and Tom Seaver's 20th win. Now have cut the Cubs lead to four games. They trail the Cubs by two in the loss column, so those games on Monday and Tuesday. Getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now a changeup and a swing and a miss. One and two. At this stage in the race, if you're in a race, everything is important. There's always that old cliche. One two pitch, check swing, ground ball, bounced out towards the pitcher. Moving to the first base side is McAndrew. He feels the ball, tosses underhanded to the first baseman, Don Glendennon, and the side is retired. The old cliche that every game from the first of the season to the end is just as important as the other. Well, a one two three inning by Jim McAndrew. He now has retired his last eight batters, make it nine batters. And the score, in the middle of the third, Philadelphia Phillies won, the New York Mets, nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Harry Von Zell with a message from the Government Educational Foundation. When you buy a house or a car, you pretty much read every word in your mortgage papers or your order form. Why then, when you have an investment in freedom, don't you study the contract you have with the United States of America? Every American is a contract citizen of the United States. We live under laws which we permit to be passed. We carry on our day-to-day activities under regulations and ordinances approved by our elected officials. But behind all of these statutes is a document many know about but few have ever really studied, the Constitution of the United States. Here is your opportunity to get this living work without cost or obligation. For your copy of the United States Constitution, write to Law and Order, Box 1627, Washington, D.C., Zip 20013. Law and Order, Washington, D.C., Box 1627, Zip 20013. A public service message from the Government Educational Foundation. Well, with the chant, let's go Mets in the background. The Mets come up here in the bottom of the third, trailing by one run. The fellas got a run in the first. And it has held up through the first two and a half innings. First batter for the Mets will be Duffy Dyer, followed by Bud Harrelson and then the pitcher Jim McAndrew. Duffy did not play in the first ball game. Jerry Grody was the catcher, and Grody had a two-run home run for the Mets' fourth and fifth run as they won the first game 5-1. to one. Dyer batting 245. he He's been up 49 times. He's had three home runs, and he has driven in nine runs. And the first pitch by Rick Wise, a slow change of curve inside for a ball. Wise has retired his first six batters in this game. And a fastball back high, and it's two balls, no strikes. Atlanta out in the top of the first against Cincinnati. They did not score. 2-0 pitch, swung on, and the count now 2-1. and one. Phil Necro pitching for Atlanta. Jim Merritt going for the Cincinnati Reds. Starting pitcher, San Francisco at Houston. Gaylord Perry for the Giants, his record 16-11. and 11. Larry Durker pitching for Houston. He has won 17 and lost 10. 2-1 pitch, again a swing and a foul tip into the glove of the catcher, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Down below, the sh- sign man with a sign saying, look alive. 
Mets were alive in that first one. Tom Seaver. Winning number 20. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. And three fastballs in a row. And Duffy Dyer is sent back to the bench. For the finest products on the road. Drive in to Sitco. A nice place to visit. That brings up Bud Harrelson, who was 0 for 3 in the first game. Bud batting 229 with no home runs and 19 runs batted in. And Rick Wise into the windup, and the pitch is taken for a ball. Make it a strike. Harrelson was out in bunting pitching position and then pulled back off. That strikeout of Duffy Dyer, the fourth strikeout for Wise in this game. One strike pitch is fouled back into the stand, strike two. At the end of eight, the Yankees won, Cleveland won. Mel Stoudemire against Sam McDowell. The Yankees got a run in the sixth to tie it up. Rick Wise shaking no on the first set of signs from his catcher Dave Watkins and now taking the second. And the two strike pitch is low. One ball, two strikes. Good sized crowd on hand. The Mets will go considerably over the million seven hundred thousand mark tonight. One two pitch grounded slowly out toward first base, coming off the mound is wise, and he picks the ball up and tosses it off to Richie Allen for the out. So eight in a row for Rick Wise, and he'll take on his ninth batter here with two men out in the third, and the batter will be Jim McAndrew. Jim's had five hits and 29 times up for a 172 average. McAndrew, a right-hand batter with three runs batted in, one extra base hit, a double. And the pitch. Breaking ball down low, and it's ball one. McAndrew, a right-hand batter with three runs batted in, one extra base hit, a double. And the pitch. Breaking ball down low, and it's ball one. Well, the Cincinnati Reds have started off with their long barrage. Home run by Perez is 34th, putting Cincinnati in front 2 nothing at the end of one. Now a swing and a foul off to the right side out of play in the count, one and one. Home run coming off Phil Negro, who is going for his 19th win. Cincinnati trailing in the Western Division of the National League race by one and a half games behind the Giants. The Giants are playing against Houston. Next pitch is grounded foul in the count one and two. Cincinnati leads the Dodgers by one percentage point, so a virtual tie for second. In the loss column, the Giants and Cincinnati with 59 losses, the Dodgers with 60, Atlanta with 63, and Houston with 64. Now the next delivery, and it's ball two. Two balls and two strikes. As Lindsay once pointed out, that loss column is important because that's the column you can control yourself. Your own destiny is involved. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. High for ball three. So a full count to Jim McAndrew. Rick Wise went to three and two on Don Clendenin and struck him out with a fastball. Only other time he has been full to a batter in this ballgame. Phillies lead 1-0, and Wise now stepping back off to clear up his glasses. That other ball club has less losses than you. There's nothing you can do about it. Now the 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. And that is the fifth strikeout 
of the nine batters that Rick Wise has pitched to, and he has retired his first nine in order. And the score at the end of three, the Philadelphia Phillies won. The New York Mets, nothing. Hello, this is Johnny Carson. For 19 years, Radio Free Europe has been providing the people of Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland, Romania, and Bulgaria with an alternative to the propaganda of the rigidly controlled communist press and radio. Radio Free Europe has become a voice of democratic opposition for these millions of East Europeans who have been denied the right to freedom of expression by their communist rulers. The people of East Europe believe in Radio Free Europe and rely on it as a trusted friend, as well as their principal source of true and unbiased information. They look upon Radio Free Europe as their own station and turn to it more than ever for inspiration in their continued efforts toward personal freedom and national independence. Write to Radio Free Europe for more information about current developments in East Europe and the work Radio Free Europe is doing for the East European people. The address, Radio Free Europe, Box 1969, Mount Vernon, New York. Thank you. Well, we're going to the top of the fourth. We pause now for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is New York Mets Baseball on WKAJFM 102.3, Saratoga Springs, New York. Rob Kiner along with Bob Murphy. And here to describe the play-by-play, -play, Lindsay Nelson. Thank you very much, Ralph Kiner. And hello again, everybody. It's Richie Allen coming up now to lead off for the Phillies here in the top half of the fourth inning. Bills are leading in the game by a score of one to nothing. Allen has been up one time in this game, and he's struck out. Jim McAndrew takes the sign from catcher Duffy Dyer. Well, he wants Dyer to run through him again for it. Allen relaxes for a moment. Now we're getting set, and here is the pitch. It's high for a ball. Johnny Callison waiting on deck. Billy's got a run in the top half of the first inning. The Mets won the first game here tonight by a score of 5-1, to one, as Tom Seaver became the National League's first 20-game winner, the New York Mets' first 20-game winner ever. 1-0 pitch. Breaks in there for a call strike. It's 1-1 one one to Richie Allen. with a 301 batting average for the season. Here's a 1-1 one -one pitch. Break high, and it goes two balls and a strike. Mets and the Phils will be here again tomorrow afternoon, again on Sunday afternoon. Then the Cubs are here Monday night and Tuesday night. Montreal for a Twinite doubleheader. Wednesday and then a single game Thursday afternoon. Here's a swing and a miss. Paul Fryer said that he tipped it back into the glove of Duffy Dyer. So the count goes two and two. Allen steps back, takes a little practice swing, and comes back into the battery box now. Here is the 2-2 offering. Swung on and line into left center, up the power alley. Extra bases, rolling all the way to the wall. Allen's on his way to second. A.G. up with the ball. Allen now goes to second and holds as Aegis throw his second way in there by Boswell. Over near third. Harrison having gone out to be the relay man. It's a leadoff double for Richie Allen. The left center field. John Callison's coming up. He had a sacrifice fly to deep right in the first inning to drive in the run. The chugging beer is here. Ryan Gold extra dry and no deposit wide mouth chug -em -up. Just pull the ring and enjoy as all that cool, crisp Rheingold flavor comes barreling through. Callison is a left-hand batter. Hitting 260, 14 homers, and 48 runs batted in. McAndrews pitch. Swung on it in the air to right field. And Svoboda comes up, digging up, digging up, and he dies and can't get it. Now Allen moves on to third, and Boswell comes up with the ball, plays it back. And holding at second base is John Callison. Svoboda is getting a hand for the great effort that he made. It's a wet outfield, and he comes him 
through the heavy going, made a dive for the ball, had it just in the tip of his glove. It rolled away, and he's getting up with his uniform covered with mud and water. It scored as a double for John Callison. Allen could not move until the play was made out there, so he advanced to third. Their runners at second and third. Nobody out, and Darren Johnson is up. He's been up one time. He grounded out third to first. Let's leave the shortstop and second baseman back. Here is a pitch high for a ball. Darren Johnson hitting 262, 16 homers and 67 runs by the death. Runners are leading at second and third, and here's the 1-0 pitch. Swung on line, deep to left field, and going back, Gary Shamsky makes the catch. Allen tags. He's coming home to throw to third, and at third base, he is out. John Callison is out at third base on a throw from Shamsky direct to Garrett. So two men are out and one run scores. The Phillies lead 2-0. Darren Johnson gets a sacrifice fly and a run by the net. But John Callison is thrown out at third from Shamsky to Wayne Garrett. So with nobody on base and two men out, Ron Stone is up. He's been up one time and he pops his short. Phillies two in the Mets nothing. Pitch to the left-hand batter. Swung on it in the air to left, and Shamsky's coming up this time. He's underneath and waiting, and Shamsky makes the catch. The side is out. As the Philadelphia Phillies picked up one run on two hits, no errors and none left. In the middle of the fourth inning, the score is the Phillies two and the Mets nothing. Now here's a word from Ryan Gold. Can you imagine a beer without a head? It's like an egg without a yolk. Bread without the crust. It's like pizza with no cheese. Beer is meant to have a head. And Rheingold is a beer that's meant to keep its head. Rheingold Extra Dry, the beer with a 10-minute head. And when the head's still there, so is all the lively beer flavor. Flavor that's made Rheingold the Extra Dry Lager beer since 1837. The proud Rheingold 10-minute head is your sign that this beer is made of the finest ingredients. This beer is truly a great one. My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. And for Rheingold, whenever you buy beer. Minute head. Haven't you timed it yet? Rheingold Breweries, New York and Orange, New Jersey. Well, the New York Mets are coming up here in the bottom of the fourth, and so far they have not had a base hit off uh, Rick Wise. They're getting support from the Mets fans here now. Wise went through the batting order the first time around in order and struck out five of the nine batters. So Tommy Agee will lead off. He has been up one time, and he struck out. He's hitting 279. The Phillies are leading 2 nothing. Right-hand pitcher facing a right-hand batter. Here's the pitch in for a call strike. The Chicago Cubs were defeated today by the Pittsburgh Pirates, 9 to 2. The Mets in the first game, one over the Phils, 5 to 1. The Mets picked up a full game. Outside for a ball. So at the start of this ball game, the Mets are trading the Cubs by four games, two in the loss column. Here's a 1-1 pitch to A.G. Inside, high, it's 2-1. Wayne Garrett waiting on deck. Hasn't spun A.G. out to the inside. Now the 
one delivery. Missing low and away. So now Wise goes behind three and one. He, of course, hasn't walked anybody. Let's have had a base runner. Rick Wise into the motion. Three one pitch. Swung on foul off to the right side into the seats and out of play. The count is, count is full at three and two. <laughs> Philly defense plays AJ just about straight away. This is a payoff pitch and it's on the way. Lowly walking, and that's get their first base runner. So it's a leadoff base runner, and it's tying run at the plate. Left hand batter Wayne Garrett, who has been up one time and grounded out second to first. Garrett with a close stance, there's in and waiting. Ricky Allen is holding against the runner. Tommy Agee at first. Agee has good speed. Throw over. Agee's back. Rick Wise sets up again. Checks the runner over his shoulder. And the pitch to Garrett is low for a ball. Don Clendenon has moved out on deck. Cleon Jones not in the lineup tonight in either game. He has been... Suffering from a bruised hand, sustained and sliding into third at San Diego. Dr. Peter Lamont examined Jones between games of the doubleheader tonight. This will be a 1 0 pitch. And it's low. Wise goes behind 2 0. Jill Hodges said that he wanted to wait until Jones were absolutely ready before he tried to get him back in the line. If he had him in and out. Jones trailing Roberto Clemente of the Pittsburgh Pirates by only one point in the National League batting race, 348-349. Richie Allen came over for a word now with Rick Wise. Goes back to the bag at first. This will be a 2-0 delivery. It's taken high, and Rick Wise goes behind on Garrett, 3-0. And then I'm waiting on deck with the big power bat. Well, you'd have to guess that Garrett will be taking a 3-0. He's checked it out with Eddie Yost on his third. As the Mets would like to get that tying run on board. Here's the 3-0 delivery, and it's in there for a call strike. He was taking it all the way in the 3-1. Now he looks to see if he's taking 3-1. message, whatever it is, he's in and waiting. Agee takes a short lead at first and the throw over. He's back in time. Rick Wise sets up. And he steps off as Agee has taken a lead. Now Agee leads again and Wise throws over. Agee dives back in this time. Grabbing the bag with his hand. Down to Garrett at the plate is three balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. Lowly walking. Agee goes to second. Garrett goes to first. Nobody out and Don Clendenon coming up. Billy's leading by a score of two to nothing. Now Rick Wise walks down to the infield grass and catcher Dave Watkins goes all the way across the mound to the back side to have a word with him. Rick Wise went through the net batting order the first time around about as impressively as you can do it. He sat the side down in order, nine consecutive men, and struck out five of them. Now he's opened up the bottom of the fourth, walking A.G. walking Garrett. Ben Dunham's coming up. He's been up one time and he struck out. have the tying runs on board with nobody out. And Dunham is up and Shamsky's on deck. Rick 
wide. Sets up to work off the stretch. And the pitch. In there for a call strike to Don Clendenin. Clendenin has 12 homers and 43 runs batted in to go with a 266 batting average. Strike one pitch. Low for a ball. It's one and one. Mets and the Phils in the second game of a twenty-nine doubleheader at Shea Stadium in New York. This will be a one-one pitch with runners leading at first and second. Swing and a miss. It's one and two to Clendon. September 5th, and the Mets are in a pennant race. Four games out. An experience they've never had before. Rick Wise again off the stretch. The pitch to Clendenin. Misses outside high. 2-2. Two -two. What you hope for with a guy like Glenn Dunnan up there is that Rick Wise, having walked two batters, if he's taking a little extreme care and aim that ball a little bit, take a little off of it. This will be a 2 2 pitch. Now they have AG in a rundown, and he is being run back towards second, and already the runner has moved up there, so he is tagged out by third baseman Darren Johnson. So there's one man out. Garrett moves to second. A.G. is out. As the play goes, 1-5. As Rick Wise turned, A.G. had made a move and committed himself. So with Wise waiting for him to commit himself further, he went right on towards third, and then the toss is made up, and Johnson ran him back. So... The tying run is at the plate now, and the count to Clendenin is 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and fouled off to the right side into the seats out of play, and the count holds at 2-2. Two and two. So the Mets trying to get a rally going here in the bottom of the fourth. Have had its time in a little bit with a loss of one out and one base runner. They still do not have a hit off Rick Wise. Here's a swing and a miss. Strikeout number six, and catcher Dave Watkins thought it was the third out. Started running to the dugout. He still had the ball, and Wise was able to stop him before he could do any further damage. Gamsky's coming up. Gamsky is coming up. He's followed in the order by Boswell. There are two men out, runner at second. He's hitting 298, 11 homers, and 36 runs batted in. He's been up one time, struck out. Pitch is swung on and foul back. It's strike one. Phillies are leading by a score of two to nothing. The Yankees and the Indians are playing a two out doubleheader, and Cleveland has won the first game by a score of two to one. They got a run in the bottom of the ninth to win it. This pitch is high to Shamsky. So Sam McDowell get his 16th win for Cleveland, and Mel Stoudelmeyer takes his 12th loss for the Yankees. Stoudelmeyer is 18 and 12. At the end of four innings, the Washington Senators lead the Boston Red Sox three nothing. Dick Voss run against Vicente Romo. Here's a pitch high for a ball. It's two and one to Shamsky. Two 
Two men out. Rick Wise takes a look around his defensive outfield before setting up again. Slow going out there in the outfield because of the recent rain. There's a 2-1 pitch. Swung on and line right at second baseline. Terry Harmon, he blocked it, picked it up, underhanded it the first in time. A hard hit ball, but directly at Terry Harmon at second base. Side is out, no runs, no hits, no errors, two walks and one left. The end of four full innings to play, the score is Bill 2, the Mets nothing. Hi, this is Bob Walton at Walton Sports Shop, urging you to stop in and see us when you need camping equipment. Now that vacation time is here, have you found that in checking over your equipment that you need something additional? Then stop in and see the wide selection we have to offer. Walton's carries pack frames, canteens, and mess kits. If this is your first year of tenting, then be sure that you see Walton's for all styles of tents, air mattresses, and Coleman stoves and lanterns. Walton's carries a full line of famous name sleeping bags. Of course, at Walton's, hunters can find everything in one convenient location. Guns, ammunition, and hand-loading equipment. And rifle scopes to make those long shots surer and safer. For the golfers, be sure to visit Walton's Par 3 room where you'll find a complete line of golf equipment. Shoes, clubs, bags, carts, and a rainproof jacket for just $9.95. A complete line of equipment for all sports is what you'll find at Walton Sports Shop, Lake Avenue in Saratoga, where sportsmen cater to sportsmen. Four innings of play now. The second game of the Twinite Doubleheader. It's the Phillies. Two runs, four hits, no errors. The Mets, no runs, no hits, no errors. The Mets won the first game five to one. Tom Seaver became the National League's first 20-game winner. Now the Phillies come up in the fifth, and it's catcher Dave Watkins. He's been up one time, and he struck out. Watkins is a right-hand batter. Jim McAndrew is the Mets pitcher. End of the motion. Swing and a high fly ball. The left field. Art Shamsky moves over. And he makes the catch. One away. Don Money. The shortstop's coming up. Been up one time and he pops second. The loans are larger at Household Finance. Now borrow up to $1,400 at any HFC office in New York. Remember, larger loans, Household Finance. Andrews pitched to Don Money. Breaks low and away, and it's ball one. Rick Wise is on deck wearing the jacket. Pitch is low for a ball. It's 2-0 and now. One man out and nobody on base. Here's the 2 delivery. Swung on and foul off to the right side out of play. It's 2-1. and one. That's in the Phils here again tomorrow afternoon. We'll be on the air at 2.10 p.m. From Shea State. 2-1 delivery. Foul off to the right side. It's 2-2. Two, two. We'll be on air Sunday at 2 p.m. with the finale of this set. Now the 2-2 pitch. Fair ball hit in the air to center field. And A.G. moves up. He makes the catch. Two away. The pitcher, Rick Wise, will be the batter. He's been up one time and he struck out. Andrews delivery, swung on an underground to third. Wayne Garrett takes a bad hop coming out the infield grass and plays the first in time to retire the side. 
No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. In the middle of the fifth inning, the score is the Phils 2, the Mets nothing. Many people, when they reach 65, would like to slow down a little, but not necessarily to retire completely. Well, you do not have to retire completely to get Social Security benefits. You can earn as much as $1,680 in a year and still get a Social Security check every month. You can earn a good deal more than $1,680 in a year and still get part of the benefits, depending on how much more you earn. And here's an important point. No matter how much money you earn during the year, you can get a benefit check for any month in which you earn no more than $140. You've just heard a lot of figures. $1,680 in a year, $140 in a month, age 65. Don't be confused. If you have any questions at all about retirement, earnings, and Social Security benefits, get in touch with your Social Security office. The people there will be glad to answer your questions and help you apply for benefits. Well, Rick Wise held the Mets to no hits through the first four, and the Mets are coming up here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Ken Boswell will lead off, and up one time and fouled out to Callison down the right field line. Callison made quite a catch over near the stand. The Mets got their first base runner, leading off the fourth when Tommy Agee drew a walk, then Garrett drew a walk, but Agee... Well, it's caught off second, between second and third. Van Dunnan struck out, and Shamsky grounded out. So now they'll see what they can do about get some, something started in the bottom of the fifth off Rick Wise. Left-hand batter facing a right-hand pitcher. Wise into the motion. And the pitcher's in there for a call strike to Ken Boswell. Boswell is hitting 259 for the season. Three homers and 23 runs batted in. Ron Swoboda is on deck. Swing and a drive into left center field. It's in there for a base hit. The first for the miss. And it's going to be Boswell trying for two to throw to second base. It's a double. He slides in, the ball gets away from second baseman Terry Harmon, and Boswell gets the double. Center fielder Johnny Briggs went over in the left center to come up with that drive on a couple of hops. Boswell decided to go for two, and he made it. Boswell has been on a hot streak. He is 14 for his last 27 times at bat. So Swoboda is up now. He's been up one time, and he grounded out third to first. He's the tying run at the plate. But the Mets have broken the ice in the base hit department here now, leading off with a double in the bottom of the fifth. The Phils lead two to nothing. This pitch is outside. He gets off the corner. Watch him. Boswell is going to third. He's there. So the Mets now have a runner at third base. We'll wait for the official scores decision on Wild Pitcher pass ball. Counted ball one to Swoboda and Duffy Dyers there in the on-deck circle. Now Boswell leaps down the line from third. Rick Wise will work straight away. This is a 1-0 pitch. High for a ball. He goes behind 2-0. It's a pass ball charged against catcher Dave Watkins that allows Boswell to go from second to third. Pass ball. Now this is a 2-0 pitch to Swoboda. Low. Rick Wise goes behind 3-0. Once again, Mets would like to get Swoboda on there to have that tying run on board. Swoboda bats number six in the order. Duffy Dyer on deck bats number seven. This is a 3-0 pitch. And it's high, walking. 
Slavota goes to first with the third walk that finished it in this game by Wise. Boswell holds it third. Coach Eddie Yost over there filling him in now on exactly what he does on every situation that could come up here. Duffy Dyer is the batter. He's been up one time and he struck out. Duffy's hitting 240. He's had three homers and nine runs batted in. The Phillies are out front 2 nothing in this game. A pitch to Duffy Dyer. Swung on and landed the right for a base hit. Oswald comes on to score. Svoboda around second and holds up as the throw comes in from Johnny Callison. Duffy Dyer is on at first with a single to right and a run batted in. The Phillies 2, the Mets 1. But Harrison's coming up. That was hit number 13 for Duffy Dyer, and he has 10 runs batted in with the 13 hit. That is clutch hitting. Bud Harrelson, the switch hitter, batting left. Shortstop, Don Muddy has come over forward with pitcher Rick Wise. In Atlanta, Henry Aaron has hit a home run for the Braves in the third inning with one on. His 38th of this year, the 548th of Aaron's career. Now, Med Runners lead at first and second. This is a pitch to Harrelson. That is low. He had the bat around. He sort of bunted and pulled the bat off the ball. Jim McAndrew is on deck. They had Harrelson around in bunting stats to move the runners over with nobody out. Now, again, runners lead, and Richie Allen moves up to the cutout of the grass at first. Third baseman Darren Johnson's in the cutout of the grass at third. Off the stretch, Rick Wise checks the runners. Harrelson squares, takes high. Throw the suck out, and Swoboda's back. Dave Watkins rifle the ball down there. So there are runners at first and second. And the count is 2-0 to Bud Harrelson. Now let's see how the Mets play it here. They've had him around to bunt on each of the first two pitches. This will be a 2-0 pitch. He's ready to swing, and he does swing, and lines one up the middle for a base hit. Swoboda's rounding third, coming home. Here is the throw to the plate. It's close, and he scores. He's safe at the plate. Moving on to second on the play is Duffy Dyer. A run batted in. It's a 2-2 ball game. So the score is tied 2-2 here at Shea, and we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're listening to New York Mets Baseball from WKAJ-FM 102.3 on your FM dial in Saratoga Springs, New York. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy at K Stadium in New York. And manager George Myatt has called time and gone to the mound to have a word with Rick Wise. Kirk Farrell and Lowell Palmer are throwing in the bullpen. Kirk Farrell and Lowell Palmer throwing in the Philly bullpen. The Mets have runners at first and second. Still nobody out. And Jim McAndrew, the pitcher, up in a sacrifice situation. With Harrelson up there, the sacrifice was on for the first two pitches. Then manager Hodges took it off on a 2-0 pitch and let Harrelson swing away. He responded by drilling a single to center field. Now McAndrew's up. He's been up one time and struck out. Phillies expect a sacrifice here. Rick Wise with the pitch. McAndrew square takes the pitch in for a call strike. He was around in Bunning's stance. Mets have had three hits here in this inning. Started this inning, they had not had a hit. Off Rick Wise through the first four. So now it's a 2-2 ball game. The Mets won the first game here tonight by a score of 5-1. to one. This is a big game. Shortstop money moves in the second now. Here's the ball, but it's foul off to the right side and out of play. The official paid attendance here at Chase Stadium tonight, 40,450. The total attendance is 41,580. Bills and the Mets in a twilight doubleheader. It'll be a two-strike delivery to McAndrew. Let's see if they have him bunting all the way or if he is allowed to swing away. Richie Allen stays on the grass at first. He squares. Bunts the ball foul. He's a strikeout victim, so McAndrew is out. I got number seven for Rick Wise. And A.G. is coming up. He was the first Met base runner when he drew a walk in the fourth inning. The Mets total.
total paid attendance for the season now has gone to 1,739,433. Rick Wise is taking a moment now, taking the handkerchief out. He's on the infield grass. Let's have runners at first and second. A.G. will be coming up. He is in and waiting. Pounds the plate. Dyer at second. Harrelson at first. Rick Wise with a pitch to A.G. That is high for a ball. Wise goes back to the rosin bag. Sets up again. delivery. Swung on and missed. It's one and one. A.G. had a good cut at that one. Now again, Wise takes his time getting to sign. Offers one one. Takes a little off of that when it's in the strike zone for a call. Strike two. It's one and two to Tommy Agee. As Wise let up. There's one man out. Double barrel action continuing in the bullpen for the Philadelphia Phillies. Now Agee backs back out of the batter's box. This will be a one-two delivery. Swung on, hammered on the ground, foul. Back of third. It's out of play. Count holds at one and two to Tommy Yagey. Ball is being retrieved by third base coach Eddie Yost. Tomorrow, Don Cardwell will be pitching for the New York Mets against Jerry Johnson of the Bills. And Sunday, it'll be Jerry Gentry for the Mets and Billy Champion for the Philadelphia Phillies. There's a one-two delivery. Break time away, and it's two-two now. Wayne Garrett waiting there on deck. That's trying to get that go-ahead run in from second base with one man out here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. they are runners at first and second. This will be a two-two pitch, and it's on the way. Swung on, hit on the ground to second. Second there by Harmon across the money. The sort of first and he's out. He is out at first base. He is out at first base on a double play as Barrow is questioning up by Tony Benson about Alling being off the bag. But it goes four six three and the side is out. But the Mets picked up two runs on three hits and a walk, no errors and one man left. The end of five full innings to play. The score is the Mets two and the Bills two. Now Terry Harmon to lead off in the top of the sixth to face Jim McAndrew. Through five innings, the Mets two runs, three hits, no errors. The Phils two runs, four hits, no errors. Harmon is one for two. He scored a run. Pop this one up, coming back over the screen and out of play. Deputy Dyer chasing it right back to the screen. Fouled it back, and it's strike one. Mac 
Andrew. Ready to work again. Goes into the motion. Strike one delivery. Swung on, foul back. It's out of play. Down to two strikes now with Johnny Briggs waiting on deck. Pitches in for a call, strike three. With the fastball, he struck him out. Strike out number four for McAndrew. That'll bring up Johnny Briggs, who's one for two. In the first game of a Twilight doubleheader at Cleveland, the Indians defeated the Yankees two to one as Sam McDowell got his 16th win and Mel Stottlemyre took his 12th loss. Warm-ups in the second game, Chris Peterson, 14 and 15 against Dick Ellsworth, six and six. Baltimore is at Detroit tonight. Mike Cuellar, 19 and 10, against Mike Kilkenny, 4 and 4. Ball is bunted on and missed for strike one by left hand batter Johnny Briggs. Up at Fenway Park in Boston, midway of the fifth inning, the Washington Senators 7, the Boston Red Sox nothing. Dick Bosman, 11 and 5, against Vicente Romo, 5 and 10, relieved by Jose Santiago in the fifth inning. Minnesota at Oakland later, Chicago at California later, Kansas City at Seattle later. Here's a swing at a high pop into short left. Shamsky's moving up and calling. He makes the catch. Two fills out in the top of the sixth, and Richie Allen is the batter. Pittsburgh Pirates defeated the Chicago Cubs today, 9-2. To Steve Blast got his 14th win. Kenny Holtzman took his ninth loss. Almost by Blast, Matty Sanguin, and Billy Williams had two for the Cubs. Montreal is at St. Louis tonight. Howie Reed, 6-4 against Nelson Bryles, 13-12. Richie Allen has struck out in doubles so far in this game. Duffy Dyer looking into the dugout is repositioning the outfield defense, moving it around a little bit, playing him to pull a little bit more than they were originally set up, but they're deep all the way around, advisedly. Two men out, nobody on base. Pitch is swung on, Hammond on the ground to third, short hop by Garrett, throw to first in time. So the side is out, in order with no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. In the middle of the sixth inning, the score is tied. The Mets two, the Phils two. And now the Let's Go Mets come up in the bottom half of the sixth inning. And it's Wayne Garrett to lead off. He's grounded out and walked. In the middle of the fourth inning, Atlanta leads Cincinnati four to two. Phil Necro, 18 and 12 against Jim Merritt, 16 and five. Tony Perez has hit his 34th. Henry Aaron is 38th. And Cleet Boyer is 13th. Wayne Garrett up there waiting. Rick Wise has been in all the way for the field, and here is the pitch. It is high for a ball. The San Francisco Giants, nothing, and Houston, nothing, in the middle of the third inning. Gaylord Perry, 16 and 11, against Larry Durker, 17 and 10. Dodgers are at San Diego later tonight. Pitch breaks inside for a ball. It's 2 and 0 to Garrett. Garrett's the number two man in the batting order, followed by Don Glendennon. This is the 2-0 delivery. In there for a call strike, it's 2-1. and one. Rick Wise has struck out seven. He's walked three. Garrett's a little tired of waiting, so he backs back out of the batter's box. Comes right back in. Here's the pitch. In there for a call, strike two. It's two and two to Garrett. It becomes a war of nerves between pitcher and batter. Batter's up there. He's all ready, and so the pitcher takes a little longer. Just to try to throw him off stride a little bit. Here's a 2-2 delivery. Swung on and hit in the air to center field. And chasing back is Johnny Briggs. And he has it lined up and makes the catch. Oh, it's in a long way. Out to the edge of the warning track between the 396 and 410 signs in right center. Rick Wise was throwing awfully hard, awfully early here tonight. And the Mets are getting to him a little bit now. Don Clendenin's coming up. Been up twice and struck out both sides. But he is capable of riding that ball for a long way. 
He's followed in the order by Art Shamsky. Now the pitch. Let up, and it's high for a ball. Rick Wass charges him off by letting up on a pitch. Here's the 1-0 delivery. Swung on and missed. Low and away, and Ben Dunnan went after it. It's 1-1. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Low and away for a ball. It's 2-1. and one. <laughs> now the 2-1 pitch. Let up, swung out, and fouled out. He gets them in and out in front on it. On the let up pitch, which is the purpose of it. It's 2-2. Two, two. Baltimore Orioles have staked Mike Cuellar to a three-run lead in his quest of his 20th victory of the year. They got three runs in the top of the first off Mike Kilkenny of the Detroit Tigers. Swing and a miss. And for the third time tonight, Rick Wise has struck out Don Glendonan. The total of eight strikeouts for Wise. Two minutes away in the bottom of the sixth and Art Shamsky coming up. Shamsky struck out and grounded out second to first. To the left hand batter is a fastball low and it's ball one. Here's the pitch. And it's in there for a call strike one and one. taking a moment now before settling himself back into the batter's box. There is nobody on base. Rick Wise with a 1-1 pitch. Swung on and hit deep to right center and it's way back there. Chased back by Briggs going, going and it is off the wall in play and on his way to third is Shamsky. There will be no play on him there. It's a triple. Art right, Shamsky with a triple off the wall. Almost a home run. The 396 sign out in right center. Center fielder Johnny Briggs had chased back there and had no play on it. Looks as though he had a homer and it goes for three bases. Now two men out in Ken Boswell is coming up. Boswell doubled the left center in the fifth inning. He fouled out down the right field line in the second. So the Mets make a bid now to go ahead here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. looked in. He'll work straight away. There are two men out. Score is tied 2-2. Wise has the sign into the motion. Low and away for a ball. Boswell in and waiting now. The ball hit by Shamsky hit about halfway up the wall. Here is the 1-0 pitch. Let up, swung on, landed to center field, and it is taken by Briggs for the out. It held up there long enough for Johnny Briggs to make a play on it, and the side is retired, so it's no runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. The end of six full innings of play, the score is tied. The Mets two, the Phils two. Hi, this is Greg Morris of Mission Impossible with an important question for young men. Do you know where you're going? Have you considered the Coast Guard? The United States Coast Guard builds well-rounded men, experts in a variety of fields, men with eyes on the future. At the United States Coast Guard Academy, you'll receive the finest education and military training, a Bachelor of Science degree, and the commission in the United States Coast Guard. If you have the ability to take command, the Coast Guard is interested in you. 
At the Academy, you can concentrate on engineering, management, or oceanography. Your training and education will encompass every facet of the Coast Guard's humanitarian mission. If you have what it takes, take a career in the Coast Guard. For brochure and application form, write to the Director of Admissions, Coast Guard Academy, New London, Connecticut. That's the Director of Admissions, Coast Guard Academy, New London, Connecticut. Now it's back to Shea for more New York Mets baseball. Full details at your Sitco dealer displaying the Be in the Money sign. Seventh inning, it's Jay. Crowd of over 40,000 watching the Twine Eye doubleheader. Johnny Callison will be leading off in the seventh. He has driven a run home with a sacrifice fly. And his last time up, he reached on a fly ball double to short right field. Outside, ball one. Darren Johnson on deck, and then Ron Stone. Now Jim McGander over the head, around comes the arm, and a high foul fly down the left field line going toward the crowd, and it will be out of play. Let's need a victory in this one. It's a big game. The Mets win to sweep the doubleheader. They'll be three and a half games out. If they lose, they'll be four and a half out but will have gained a half game. So it's a question of picking up a half game or a game and a half tonight. The 1-1 delivery. Line drive hit hard. A base hit to right field for Johnny Callison. He's around first base and he'll hold with a single. Swoboda throws in behind him, but he gets back. Base hit number five for Philadelphia. And it brings up slugger Darren Johnson. He has bounced out to third and driven a run home with a line drive sacrifice fly. Darren Johnson batting 262. Now McAndrew checks the runner. Here's the pitch on the way and a high fly to center field. Tommy Agee comes in one step and makes the catch. Ron Stone, the left fielder, will be the hitter. He has popped his short and flied to left, nothing for two. So he's a left-hand hitter, and both times up has hit the ball to the opposite field. Philadelphia, two runs, five hits, no errors. New York, two runs, four hits, and no errors. Bill scored in the first and again in the fourth. The Mets scored twice in the fifth inning to tie the game. Now McAndrew eyes the runner, then pitches. Low and outside, ball one. Don Clendenin holding against the runner. And the pitch on the way popped up on the left side of the diamond. Bud Harrelson on the skin part of the diamond between second and third has it for the out. Now there are two away in the visiting seventh inning. The batter coming on will be the catcher, Dave Watkins. Watkins has been struck out and fly to left, nothing for two. Catcher, Mike Ryan caught the first game. Number two. George Myatt running his ball club off the coaching lines at third. Billy DeMars coaching at first. Now let's keep an eye on Johnny Callison. 
he might very well try to put himself into scoring position. McAndrew looks him back. And the pitcher on the way is in for a call strike one. Let's have the infield just a stride to left against right hand hitter Dave Watkins. And a breaking ball over, a call, strike two. In the first game, in winning 5-1, to one, Tom Seaver walked only one man. In this game, Jim McAndrew has not given up a walk. Now Callison leads away. The two-strike delivery is inside. One ball and two strikes. Mets two and the Phillies two. This is the seventh inning. Mets trying to sweep. They won the opener 5-1. The one-two delivery. Low and outside. There goes Callison on a delayed steal. The throw goes into center field. Callison is on his feet and he goes on to third base. Callison winds up on third. The throw was in the dirt, but went right over the bag, and on the delayed steal, Callison caught Harrelson and Boswell by surprise. It will be a stolen base and an error charged on the throw made by Duffy Dyer. So now the tie-breaking run is on third, two men down, and the count is two and two on Dave Watkins. Andrew swings out of his windup. Here's the pitch. And a foul pop-up. No play for Dyer. It's back behind the screen. Jim McAndrew with an uneasy moment on his hands. Johnny Callison on third. Now Watkins cowtailing the bat around, cocks it off the right shoulder. High, ball three, and the string is out. Don Money, the shortstop who hits eighth in the order, is the on-deck batter. Now McAndrew getting his sign from Duffy Dyer. Pitching three and two. Ground ball, bounced down to third, a tough chance, booted by Garrett. He throws the first safe, and a run is in. Phillies lead, three to two. Garrett trying to come up with the off-beat hop. Was unable to feel the ball clean, pursued it, and threw to first, but not in time. It will go as an infield hit. Garrett had a very tough chance. He had to charge the ball hard and try and come up with a short hop. So Watkins is on with an infield hit. It drives a run in, and the Phillies are back in front. And the stolen base by Johnny Callison pays off. Now the hitter is Don Money. There goes the runner. The pitch is high. The pig by Dyer. The slide. Out. Boswell putting the tag on Dave Watkins. One run. Two hits. One error, none left. At the end of six and one-half innings, the Philadelphia Phillies three and the New York Mets two. Well, remember, tomorrow afternoon is camera day here at Shea Stadium. We hope all of you amateur photographers bring a lot of film and enjoy yourself at the picture-taking session. Gil Hodges, the coaching staff, and the players will all be in uniform and pose for your picture-taking in a 30-minute session starting at 12.15 tomorrow. And, as in the past, valuable prizes, including an eight-day trip for two to Las Vegas, Palm Springs, and Los Angeles, will be awarded for the best shot, which may be mailed to the following address. Pathmark, Met Camera Day, Box 125, Carl Place, New York. The zip code is 11514. That's Pathmark Met Camera Day, Box 125, Carl Place, New York. Entries must be in no later than October 1st, so all of you fans planning to shoot photos of your favorite Mets plan to be here tomorrow afternoon 
at 12.15 in Cameron Day for the Mets playing the Phillies. While we're waiting for Ron Swoboda to lead off the last of the seventh inning, we'll pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is New York Mets Baseball on WKAJ-FM 102.3, Saratoga Springs, New York. Sound. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kainer. This is the last of the seventh inning. Now the windup by Wise. Here's the pitch on the way. And a breaking ball, low outside, ball one. Now Ron Taylor starts warming up in the New York bullpen. At a half swing, ground ball caught in the air by Yogi Berra. And they give Yogi a big hand. Bill Hodges and Yogi Bear are old hands at this being in a pennant race. They relish the idea. Yogi was on 13 pennant winners. Managed the Yankees to a pennant from 64. Now the 1-1 delivery. Swing and a miss on an off-speed pitch by Rick Wise. One ball and two strikes. Dyer is the on-deck batter. The one-two delivery, low and outside. Ron Swoboda walked twice in the first game, and he drew a walk his last time up and later scored a run. Pitching two and two. And a smash it hard, a base hit to right field. Johnny Callison scoops it up and plays it back in. The dying run is on. Nobody out. Lowell Palmer, a right-hander, warming up now for Philadelphia. Duffy Dyer, the batter. Duffy is single to run home his last time. Up one for two. And they're looking for the bunt. He squares around, bunts, fair ball coming off the mound, the pitcher wise. The play is the first base in time. Harmon coming over to handle the throw, and Dyer does his part in trying to help build the run as he bunts the runner over. Now Bud Harrelson comes up. Dave Watkins goes out to the mound. Harrelson slashed the ground single up the middle, driving home the run that tied the ball game. In the fifth inning, Phillies have just regained the lead by getting a run in the top of the seventh. Ron Taylor is in the bullpen with the pitcher Jim McAndrew due up next and the Mets will run behind. That got a bad break. On the run across the plate in the seventh. And a line drive in the air to center field racing over is Johnny Briggs. He makes the catch. He was playing a shallow left center against Bud Harrelson. Bud hit a ball that you normally would associate with being a base hit. But they don't play him normally, defensively. J.C. Martin is coming out. He'll bat for Jim McAndrew. J.C. Martin... Being sent up now by Gil Hodges to try and tie the ball game up. We're in the last of the seventh inning. Crowd of over 40,000 for the Twinite doubleheader. Tomorrow is Ladies' Day and Camera Day. Game time, 2.15. Not a single game of Sunday afternoon. Now J.C. Martin, a left-hand hitter, batting at 2.24. So 
Well, Jim McAndrew is out of the game after pitching seven good innings. And the pitch on the way. It's on the outside corner, a call strike. The Phillies got a run in the seventh. And the key was the delayed steal of second by Johnny Callison because when Dyer's throw went to center field, he moved to third. Otherwise, he could not have scored on that infield hit to third by Watkins. Now Wise eyes the runner at second. And the pitch to Martin. Call strike on the outside corner. And J.C. did not like the call by Paul Pryor, and he walks around a bit. with a two-strike advantage. <laughs> Ron Swoboda leading off second. Here's the pitch on the way. Fouled back over the screen. Martin guarding that strike zone very carefully now. Tommy Agee is on deck. Phillies three runs, six hits and no errors. New York two runs, five hits and one error. Martin cowtails the bat around and Coxon. The two strike pitch. Look out. Lay inside. It's ball one. One and two. Wise, a 23 year old right hander from Jackson, Michigan. At the age of 23, he has four years in the big leagues. up in pitching position. Around comes the arm. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Good fastball by Wise. His ninth strikeout. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. At the end of seven innings, the Philadelphia Phils three and the New York Mets two. A lot of people these days are asking what this country's coming to. What it's all about. Well, it's about a lot of things that we take for granted. Like arguing with each other. Some places in the world you can't argue out loud about politics, for example. In some places, that's a privilege they're fighting for right now. We take a lot of other things for granted, too. Free enterprise. The new opportunities that people demand and get because they demand it. That's what America is all about. And that's why I'm a pilot in the Air Force Reserve. That's why one weekend a month, I fly. So we can stay on top. So nothing will take us by surprise. Just so we can keep on taking this country of ours for granted. If you have Air Force flying experience, contact the nearest Air Force Reserve unit or the Reserve Affairs Officer at the nearest Air Force base for further information and details. the eighth inning at Shea Stadium. The Phillies lead 3-2. Ron Taylor is on in relief. Jim McAndrew again pitching solid baseball. He allowed three runs, six hits. He walked none and struck out four. Mack deserved a better fate. Phillies got the tie-breaking run of the seventh on a single by Callison. On a delayed steal, he stole second and continued on to third when Dyer's throw went to center field. He scored on an infield hit by Dave Watkins. For Ron Taylor, his 55th appearance of the year. Ron has won seven and lost four. In the eighth inning, the Philadelphia shortstop, Don Money, comes up against Ron Taylor. Bills lead 3-2. Mets won the opener 5-1. Mets have done better against the Western Division this year than they have against the Eastern Division. And the pitch on the way. Line drive into center field, a base hit. Money hitting Ron Taylor's first delivery. 
Now Rick Wise will be coming up in a bun situation. Wise is a good hitter. One of the best hitting pitchers in the National League. He has a batting average of 288. Now Garrett comes in close at third in the bun situation. Taylor into the stretch. And the pitch, he turns to Bunt, bunts the ball, it's fair, back to the mound. Taylor up with it, throws to first. Boswell covering on the throw. And now the Phillies, trying to build an insurance run, have money on second. Second baseman, Terry Harmon, comes on. He reached on an infield hit in the opening inning and later scored. A couple of infield hits. Really hurt Jim McAndrew in this ball game. Philly's got a run in the first inning without hitting the ball hard. And again in the seventh. Nolan Ryan is up in the bullpen for New York. Now Ron Taylor delivers. Low and outside ball one. We're in the eighth inning of the second game of the doubleheader. Let's have three doubleheaders remaining in Shea Stadium after tonight and one on the road. Way inside, that almost hit Terry Harmon. He just got out of the way of it. And Ron Taylor is behind two balls and no strikes. Terry Harmon, one hit and three times at bat. An infield hit, he flied to center and he took a call, third strike. Now the 2-0 delivery, ground ball right at Buddy Harrelson, he bobbles it, recovers and throws, in time. Hard ground ball that was bobbled just for a moment by Bud, but he grabbed it in midair and then made his throw across the diamond. Now two men away and the hitter is Johnny Briggs. He has led the Philadelphia attack in this doubleheader with four hits in seven times at bat. He had three of the five hits given up by Tom Seaver in the first game. He had a single, a double, and a triple. In this ball game, he singled his first time up to help build a run on a hit and run play. Taylor picking up his sign from Duffy Dyer. The outfield swung way around to right. And a line drive hit hard, a base at the center field. Rounding third and heading home is money. The throw coming in, not in time. And into second on the throw goes Johnny Briggs. So the Phillies get their insurance run. They now lead four to two. Quite a doubleheader for Johnny Briggs. He now has five hits, three in the first game and two in the nightcap. He hit a hard line drive into center field, and he took second on the throw home. Now Richie Allen. Now let's see how Gill elects to handle this. First base is open. But the on-deck batter is a left-hand hitter, Johnny Callison. Richie Allen, one hit and three times at bat. A hard double to deep left center. Last time up, Garrett made a good play to throw him out. Now the stretch by Ron Taylor. And the pitch on the way. Foul to back upstairs. No play. count on Richie Allen. 
Johnny Briggs on second, two men down. The pitch by Ron Taylor, a swing and a miss, and a breaking ball, and the count is strike two. digging a hole with that back foot. Wagging that 40-ounce bat around, waiting on Ron Taylor. The two-strike delivery, low and outside, one and two. Phillies have scored a run in the eighth inning on a single by Don Money. He was bunted to second, and he came in on the base hit by Johnny Briggs. Briggs has five for eight in the doubleheader. Now Briggs leading off second. And the pitch by Taylor curved way outside. Two and two on Richie Allen. The Atlanta Braves leading Cincinnati seven to two now in the seventh inning at Cincy. Taylor checks the runner and the pitch to Richie Allen. Low and outside, ball three. So Ron Taylor had a two-strike advantage, and now the count is full, three and two. That's playing the outfield about as deep as they can get it against Mr. Allen. Cleanup batter Johnny Callison kneeling on deck. The Mets have Nolan Ryan working in the bullpen. Now, Ron Taylor is in the set position. Here's the pitch. Curve, strike three call. The side is out. So Ron Taylor on three and two broke off a beautiful curveball to get Richie Allen. One run, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of seven and one half innings, the Philadelphia Phils four and the New York Mets two. There have been a lot of changes in baseball. Many of the hitters have gone to lighter bats. They like to use pine tar to help tighten their grip. The fielders are using bigger and better gloves, and not too often nowadays does a relief pitcher have to walk in from the bullpen. There are 12 teams in each league with a playoff for the pennant. They've changed the strike zone and lowered the pitcher's mound. But there's one thing about baseball that hasn't changed, and that's the beer that goes best with it. Rheingold Extra Drive. Rangle, the beer with a 10-minute head. That head, that's the sign of a truly great beer. Beer brewed of the finest malt, beer aged to perfection. Because as long as the head's still there, so is all that lively beer flavor. The Rangle 10-minute head. Haven't you timed it yet? Rangle Breweries, New York and Orange, New Jersey. Joseph is now playing first base for the Phillies. And Tommy Agee leads off the last of the eighth inning with the Mets two runs behind. Rick Wise out of his wind up the pitch. Curve, a swing and a miss, drank one. Tommy Agee 0 for 2, reached on a walk in the fourth inning. That's two runs down. We're the last of the eighth inning. Here's the pitch on the way. Had a slow bouncing ball charged by Darren Johnson. Picked up by Money. No play. AG is on. Donnie AG reaching on an infield hit. Slow bouncer on the left side of the diamond. Johnson cutting across the carpet. Tried to cut it off but couldn't come up with it. George Myatt is going out to the mound. 
That was the sixth hit in the ball game for New York, and Wayne Garrett will be coming up. The Atlanta Braves lead Cincinnati 7 to 2 going to the seventh. Phil Necro after his 19th. Tony Perez, Henry Aaron, and Cleet Boyer have hit home runs that game for Hank Aaron, his 38th. San Francisco nothing, Houston nothing at the end of five. Perry, a 16 game winner. I guess Larry Durker, a 17 game winner. Montreal and St. Louis, no score at the end of three. Howie Reed against Nelson Bryles. In an afternoon game, the Pirates beat the Cubs 9 2. Now Garrett is the batter. Here's the pitch on the way. It's over at the knees, call strike one. The Dodger San Diego game not yet underway. Now Lowell Palmer, a right hander, is warming up in the Philadelphia bullpen. The young deck hitter is Don Clemden. Mets trail 4 2, last of the eight. Montreal and St. Louis, no score at the end of three. Howie Reed against Nelson Bryles. In an afternoon game, the Pirates beat the Cubs 9 to 2. Now Garrett is the batter. Here's the pitch on the way. It's over at the knees, call strike one. The Dodger San Diego game not yet underway. Now Lowell Palmer, a right hander, is warming up in the Philadelphia bullpen. The young duck hitter is Don Clendon. Mets trail 4 to 2, last of the eight. And the pitch. Fastball, a strike on the inside corner. Rick Wise has struck out nine men. His high for one game this year has been ten. Rick Joseph about a stride off the bag at first. A.G. leads away. And a swing and a miss. Garrett goes down swinging. And Rick Wise got him on three pitches. It brings up Don Clendenon. Don has been up three times and struck out all three. Clendenon representing the tying run at bat. Mets trailing four to two. And the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss, strike one. Wise working the outside corner beautifully to Don Clendenon. Art Shamsky is on deck. Shamsky almost hit one out his last time at bat. His triple to right center field hit the fence on the fly. The one strike delivery. The runner is going. A swing and a miss. The peg, the slide. A.G. is out. Tommy A.G. is cut down. Glenn Dunham went after the pitch to protect the runner. So now, two men away. That was a good play only if you make it. And the two-strike delivery by Wise in the dirt. All the way to the backstop, and A.G. would have moved over on that one. It's one ball and two strikes to John Glendon. Now Wise into his windup, and the pitch to Glendon, low and outside, two balls and two strikes. Philadelphia four runs, eight hits, and no errors. The Mets two, six, and one. Clendon and feet wide apart, bends from the waist. And the two two delivery. Outside, ball three. Now a full count, three and two. Wise has walked three. And struck out 10. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out for the fourth straight time. That's the 11th strikeout for Rick Wise, his high for the season. No runs, one hit, no errors, and none left on. 
At the end of eight innings, the Philadelphia Phils four, and the New York Mets two. Having a problem in deciding where to take your group on its next outing? If so, let the Mets Group Sales Department solve it for you. This department is manned by experts in handling both men's and women's groups. These same specialists encourage community and civic organizations, social and fraternal clubs, youth, family, and athletic groups to take in a Mets ball game and enjoy a day at Shea. In addition to providing group ticket sales for a ball game, our representatives will be happy to furnish you with all the details of the beautiful restaurants at Shea Stadium, which are available for parties, large or small, up to 700 persons. For group of 100 or more, recognition will be given to your organization on the changeable message scoreboard here at Shea. Residents of Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York can easily obtain additional information simply by writing to Group Sales Manager, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York, 11368. Or if you like, telephone 212-672-3000. The representative handling your area will be more than happy to personally speak before your men's or women's group, large or small, and explain all the details. Call or write today. Well, here we go to the ninth inning. The Phillies in front 4-2 to two after the Mets won the opener 5-1. to one. And while Ron Taylor throws in his warm-ups, we'll pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is WKAJ-FM, Saratoga Springs, New York. 102.3 on your FM dial, the home of the New York Mets. Bob Murphy with Ralph Kainer and Lindsey Nelson were going to the ninth inning. And Johnny Callison will lead off against Ron Taylor. Johnny Callison has two for two and a sacrifice fly. He drove home the first of four runs scored by the Phillies. And the pitch by Ron Taylor hit high in the air, a fly ball to left field. Art Shamsky is under it, draws a beat on it, makes the catch. Art Shamsky will be leading off in the last of the ninth inning. Now Darren Johnson, the third baseman. Nothing for two at a sacrifice fly to drive a run in. Johnny Callison, Darren Johnson, Dave Watkins, and Johnny Briggs have driven in the runs for the Phillies. And the pitcher on the way, a swing and a miss. He lost the bat. He was fooled by Ron Taylor. Darren Johnson, unknown to him, played most of last year with a small broken bone in his hand. Had a very bad year. Discovered the injury at the end of the season. He has made quite a comeback. And a drive in the air to left field. Shamsky cutting over is there. And makes the catch two down. So two up and two set aside by Ron Taylor. And the batter now will be Ron Stone, the left fielder. He's a left-hand hitter, but all three times up has hit the ball to the opposite field. Twice he has popped the short. And he flied to left field. Ron Stone hitting at 243. The infield and the outfield around to right. Swing and a miss strike one. So he obviously is known as a pull hitter, although he has not pulled the ball so far in this game. Next pitch by Ron Taylor, a bunt attempt going foul down the third baseline. In the last of the ninth inning, the Mets will have Art Chamsky, Ken Boswell, and Ron Swoboda coming up. Taylor, with a two-strike advantage, delivers, and it's grounded foul toward the New York dugout. No play, and the count stays strike two. Dave Watkins is the on-deck batter. The game was tied by the Mets in the fifth inning when they scored twice. But the Phillies picked up single tallies in the seventh and in the eighth for their 4-2 to two lead. Two-strike pitch. Hip. Foul down the left field line. He just missed an extra base hit. 
Again, Ron Stone hitting the ball the other way. Paid crowd of over 40,000 for the Twininer against Philadelphia. Phillies have given the Mets a rugged battle all year long. The Mets lead the season series seven games to five. Now the two-strike pitch. And it's hit in the air to shallow center. A.G. coming full speed. And it's going to drop in for a base hit. A Texas ligger for Ron Stone. For the Phils, they're ninth hit of the ball game. And now the catcher, Dave Watkins, gets rid of his catching gear and comes forward to the plate. He drove in the tie-breaking run with an infield hit. That put the Phillies in front, 3-2 in the top of the seventh inning. Callison stole second on a delayed steal and went on to third when the throw went into center field. He was able to score on an infield hit off Garrett's glove. Ron Taylor up in pitching position. Delivers to Watkins a fastball. Strike one call. Afternoon games tomorrow and Sunday. The game tomorrow, 2.15 p.m. And tomorrow is camera day and ladies day. Don Clendenin holding against the base runner, Ron Stone. Now Taylor throws over. Gentle breeze blowing from right across toward left. The Philadelphia shortstop, Don Money, hitting eighth in the order, is on deck. And the pitch on the way, hip foul down the right field line, swerving now over into the crowd. So Ron Taylor has a two-strike count. At Fenway Park, the Red Sox came up with four runs in the seventh inning. Rico Petroselli hit a three-run homer, and for Petroselli, that's his 35th home run of the year. He's having quite a year. Boston goes in front of Washington 8-7 to seven at the end of seven innings. The Yankees and the Indians are scoreless at the end of four and a half in their second game. There goes the runner. The pitch is swung on and missed strike three. Side retired as Ron Taylor strikes out Dave Watkins with the runner going. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. And at the end of eight and one half innings, the Philadelphia Phils four and the New York Mets two. The last of the ninth inning, New York will have Art Shamsky, Ken Boswell, and Ron Swoboda coming up. The Mets trailing by two runs, and this is a big game. If the Mets win, they'll be three and a half games out. If they lose, four and a half games out. A question of gaining a half game or a game and a half on Chicago. Pittsburgh beat the Cubs 9-2 at Wrigley Field this afternoon. Art Shamsky, one hit and three times up. He tripled his last time at bat. Didn't miss a home run by much. And a grounder foul back toward the Mets dugout. Now George Mayan has Lowell Palmer get up in the Philadelphia bullpen. Rick Wise has gone all the way. Wise has walked three, struck out 11. Allowed two runs and six base hits. The tall right-handers pitch on the way. A ground ball hit hard into right field for a base hit. Rick Joseph made a lunge at it but couldn't come up with it. And Al Weiss comes out as a pinch runner. So Shamsky gets it going with a base hit to right field. Hart's second straight hit. And it looks like he's broken his batting slump, and that's good news. Ken Boswell is the hitter. Boswell has been hitting the ball hard. He has one for three in this game, a line drive double to left center. His last time up, he hit a liner to center field that was caught. That was behind the triple by Shamsky. And that's two runs behind, last of the ninth inning. Now Wise up in pitching position. Delivers. 
A swing and a miss strike one. Mets digging in, trying to bail this one out. They've come from behind over 20 times, about 27 times this year to win. And the stretch. Here's the pitch on the way. A towering pop foul that might be playable. Watkins coming back near the backstop. No play. Oh, just beyond his reach. That came right down over the backstop screen. And now Wise has a two-strike count on Ken Boswell. Wise has been very tough on the right-hand hitters. Getting his sign from Dave Watkins. He has a two strike count on Boswell. And the pitch on the way, way outside. One ball and two strikes. Al Weiss on first base running for Art Shamsky. Ron Swoboda is on deck and then Duffy Dyer. Pitching one and two. Outside and high, two balls and two strikes. Art Shamsky got it going with a single to right. Watkins goes out to talk with his pitcher, Rick Wise. Lowell Palmer, a 21-year-old right-hander who was brought up from the Coast League in the middle of the season by Philadelphia, is in the bullpen. Phillies four, Mets two, last of the night. Boswell, feet rather close together. Stands well back from the plate and the pitch. Line drive in the air to right field. Callison racing back. He's getting there, makes the catch. Good play by John Callison. Boswell almost had that one over the head of Callison. He's an excellent outfielder. And he ran to the warning track toward the right field corner to catch the line drive. Boswell just missing in his pit. Now Ron Swoboda coming up. That's the second line drive in a row Boswell has had caught. Ron Swoboda, one for two. He singled to right field his last time at bat. Ron is the tying run at bat. Now Wise off the stretch. Here's the pitch. It's down the middle. Strike one call. It has been hard for the right-hand batters to pull the ball against Rick Wise. The left-handers have pulled it fairly well. Ron Swoboda waiting. Now the pitch to him. Curve off the outside corner. One ball and one strike. On deck, Duffy Dyer. Billy Dugout trying to get the attention now of the outfield. To move them slightly. Wise with a count of one ball, one strike. Delivers. A change up hit on the ground. A shortstop. Bat hop. Base hit going into left field. Al Weiss is on his way to third. He'll make it. And the throw comes into second. Oh, what a break. And the Mets get a good bounce. On a ground ball hit by Ron Swoboda, it hit something and bounced over the head of Money. Well, those are the kind of breaks that make up for those line drives that you have caught. Boswell has just seen his long line drive shot, and Duffy Dyer is the batter. George Myatt wants to get to the mound and talk to his pitcher. He's coming out on the run. Dyer is the batter with runners on first and third. The dying runs are on base with one out. They are now getting the attention of the outfielders to remind them one man down. So 
Al Weiss is on third. Ron Swoboda on first. Had that ball not taken a bad hop and very well. It might have been a double play, and the game would have been over. So now Duffy Dyer is up one for two in a sacrifice. And the pitch to him. Outside, ball one. Right on the edge of their seats now. Rick Wise up into pitching position. Delivers to Dyer. And a check swing grounder taken by Wise. Throws the second one. On to first. Double play. The Phils win it. A 1-6-3 double play. And the Phillies win the ball game. Dyer was trying to hold up on his swing. But it struck the big end of the bat. Went right back to the mound. And Wise gets a double play. Throwing to the shortstop and back to first. No runs, two hits, no errors, and one left. The Phillies win the nightcap. The final score, the Phillies four, and the New York Mets two.